Hello! I realize it's kind of early today, but... <coughs> Excuse me! I'm going to be doing a lot of work today. I decided to record and broadcast it. It is tangentially related to 3D printing. However, I will not be able to place the final results of today's work on Thingiverse or any other free site because this is a product I'm working on for my actual day job, which involves 3D Studio Max, ZBrush, and, and, and the like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a Thunder Drake. Now, the way I, what I have in mind for this is I actually came up with a ecological niche, and that is it's a super heavy predator, a slow well, part scavenger, part predator, and it only would work in a fantasy world. It would be faster than it looked, but not a, like a cheetah or a lion fast. We're talking like rhino. Effectively imagine a carnivorous rhino that could breathe out a bolt of lightning because it's part dragon. And that's really the only way that kind of body plan would work as a predator, is if it had some kind of ranged attack. It's massive for the sole purpose of it has to compete with other types of predators. And so its niche is it's so tough, so powerful, that if other predators like wolves or hunting drakes or that kind of thing try to move in on his prey, he can just plow through them and just, you know, bat them aside like they were flies. So, one of the aspects that I'm going to be working with, and hello, Ruo and Edwin, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm taking inspiration, like I said, from the Rhino. So, I have gotten an anatomy study that I've downloaded. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to take ideas from it to see how the muscles flow and that kind of body type. And Ed Voin, I can't, I can't unsee Olive either. R U W Olive. Anyway. Besides just the, the musculature, I've also downloaded a photo of the skeleton. <clears throat> Again, so I can see not only the muscle flow, but also where the bony landmarks would be and where the joint centers would be and what sort of direction the joints would move in. And hello, object. Basically, the idea is this will be an actual rigged, articulated figure for my work. So, it's, it's imagine a rhinoceros dragon, basically. There we go. And, in addition to these, I've also got several images of dinosaur heads and other things like that that I'm going to be using as inspiration for the head and the bone structure of the head. Now, in about an hour and a half, maybe, I will be putting this on pause for a little bit because I've got to do a couple things for, you know, here at the house, but that will probably only be about a half hour pause. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get straight into it. This is a extremely low poly decimated human figure and for to, to, to make twitch happy it's got a different color uh, you know, hip area like it's wearing biker shorts this is here purely so that I have something to use for scale and as you can see it's off-center from the uh, the ax the x-axis Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with the basic shapes that I need. And looking at, let me 
go ahead and pull this up. Looking at the anatomy here, it's, yeah, there we go. We're going to start that the body off. This is this, this anatomy will not be uh, will not be the final geometry of it. This is just a rough drawing. So first things first, we're going to draw a sideways outline. Now we're going to make sure that each of these points has an equivalent point below it. The reason for this is that way I can actually draw across. Now, problem is that's too narrow. We need to make it thicker. I'm just going to draw this up a bit. Draw this up. Unlike a rhino, it's going to be a little bit more hunchbacked than a rhino. The way I look at it, evolutionary speaking, this did evolve from dragon-like critters, which had wings. Now I convert this into a polygon. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to, well first let's make it a very pale green so I can easier to see. We're going to cut across where each of the vertexes are. So we can add Uh, where's the vertex? There. Okay. I didn't couldn't tell if I had left it or not. And cut here down to there. Here down to there. And I think I've got I've got one too many points on the bottom, and I do. So I'm just gonna select that and remove it. <clears throat> now this is extremely low polygon. And oh, I need to weld all of these because some of them didn't quite. Oh, oh, yay! Yeah. No wonder it had an extra extra vertex. Now this will be nothing like the final geometry. This is what's called a uh, yeah, there we go. This is just geometry I'm making as a base to work from for the sculpture of it. Let's weld that. Now, we're going to add in two lines. They're going to be there very wide apart and we're gonna bring them out now remember this is only going to be half of the critter now I'm also going to go ahead and deselect that line and bring this one in just a little bit because it tends to be more sloped on a critter like the Triceratops or the Stegosaurus or the Rhinoceros. And now I'm going to select and ring again. When I do a ring select, that means every line that's parallel, they all get selected. If I do a loop, that means every line that's in a direct line is selected. And I'm going to connect these, but just one and 
kind of near the bottom a little bit. I'm going to pull it out. This is our basic shape. I'm going to mirror it. And then this is going to attach this. And weld vertexes. And I have a basic, the basic torso before I start playing with the shape. Now I need to make the neck a lot narrower. Actually, that also might be the base of the head at this point, because it's it's going to get sculpted out. Oh, by the way, anyone who's uh, interested in equestrian matters, uh, we have another... Triple crown winner. <clears throat> okay, we've got a nice base shape for the torso. It looks narrow, but that's because it doesn't have the shoulders and hips on yet. Um, I'm going to take this, make it just a little bit bigger, and rotate it a bit, because this is where our tail is going to come out of. And we're going to select just that edge and change. All right. Now we're going to go and chamfer it, and deselect. And what that did was it effectively added a second edge just inside. So I'm going to select it, and I'm just going to bring it straight out, and then shrink it. That's the basic tail there. I'm then going to go ahead and chamfer it again. I'm not going to select it. Zoom out. Just a little, not zoom out, but pull it out. And then I'm going to collapse it. So it becomes one vertex. Now I'm going to do something similar to have a base amount of ma mesh to make the head. It's going to be a bit more... Just a little bit of neck visible. Now... Chamfer. This tool over here selects any open faces that are connected to the one you just selected. I'm going to shrink it a little bit here. And we're going to rotate it so that it's flat front for sculpting purposes. And then we're going to take care of this. Sorry if I'm being a little bit quiet. It's my brain is going erp, 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 erp. And then we're going to select that, bring it, bring it forward, and collapse it. And this is our basic torso shape. Now what I might do is I might go ahead and grab these vertexes and bring them up just a little bit and these down.
yeah so it now has a hump over the shoulders and a hump over the hips the reason for that is because when you get that big holding that much weight up is hard even if you've got spine bones that huge so next up is we're going to go ahead and take a look once again at our skeleton now what I'm going to do with the skeleton here is I'm looking at specifically where these shoulder bones and arm bones are <clears throat> you'll notice that where we have our shoulder blades on the back this rhino shoulder blade is vertical and it's slanting forward and then the upper arm comes back and the lower arm comes down also interesting to note is that its back legs are plantigrade now what plantigrade means humans if this is our if this is a foot humans walk flat footed and most animals tend to walk on the tips of their toes that's where you get what's called the pastern or the fat you know the the triple jointed legs is what's called digitigrade digitigrade because they're walking under digits their fingers but the rhino here is plantigrade on the back legs i'm thinking i may go with digitigrade for those back legs just to give it a bit more of a saurian feel like a like a T-Rex, they just grow on the big upper body and pfft, oh, now it's on. So, <clears throat> we go back here. That's about, no, uh, it's a little small for what I was originally intending. So let's raise them up a bit and then scale them up. He needs to be big enough that he's going to scare elephants but not so big that you can't put him in the scene with a human because the human wouldn't be seen. I also just realized I forgot to scale that part of the tail. There. <clears throat> now, just to make that tail nice and thick, we're going to add in one more Just gonna slide it back, and then another one, but this time back here. And slide it forward. Now that's our tail. Let's oh, let's bring the top of the tail up because it's hanging. What a lot of people don't realize about, let's say, T-Rex tails. Oh, I forgot to switch back to this page, didn't I? Yeah. What a lot of people don't realize about, like, the T-Rex tail is the bones were rigid. It didn't exist, you know, it didn't drag on the ground and act like a tripod, like a kangaroo. They were rigid. They were a keel, a counterbalance. Even a lot of the, the heavy quadruped herbivores like the stegosaurus. The stegosaurus's tail could move side to side decently. It almost couldn't move up and down. It was those bones were almost locked together vertically. They could bend, but not this way. And that's something similar I'm gonna handle with this. Okay. Once again looking at the bones here, I'm gonna put the shoulder blade alongside it's going to be an actual separate piece of geometry and I'm gonna make it from a box right. I make the box it's also gonna be thicker than the bone because it's assumed to have muscle etc now the reason I'm making this from a box is because of how I'm going to be handling sculpting the final part of it and that is I'm going to be doing it in ZBrush which will allow me to fuse this. And 
by fusing it, it will become part of the geometry. Now, it needs to be up a bit further. And I'm going to make an edible poly. Grab these and move them in a bit. Grab this and move it in a bit. Grab this, move it up a bit. And then I'm going to add in an edge loop. Ring and connect. Move out of the way so I can see where it is. Thank you. I'm going to drop it down a bit. I think I need to select this one and bring it. down a bit and there. Now, next part is selecting that back polygon. Once again, looking at the skeleton, it comes back almost straight and it's about half the length of that shoulder area there that I just made. So we're going to pull it out. We're going to pull it out to about there. We're going to bring it in quite a bit. Actually, let's bring it down. And let's grab these and move them up and forward. We don't want it to. That right there, that's the upper arm bone. And next will come basically the forearm. To do that, we're going to make, give it another small bit of an extrusion. But this time, we're only going to grab these bone, these vertexes and bring it back. Now we're going to select that and extrude down. <coughs> and we're going to make it flat to the floor by Y scaling it zero and then moving it on Z to zero. For those who are watching this who, who know 3D printing, in most 3D pro graphics programs that don't have anything to do with printing, Z is in and out, not up and down. Y is up and down. Or, or Z is up and down. Y is in and out. Z is up and down. 3D printing, I don't know why they decided to go for Z up and down, but oh, well, maybe it's because the bed is seen as the X and Y, whereas in 3D, the screen is seen as X and Y. Anyway, I'm going to connect these because I'm going to add on some raw material to make the foot from. Look for normal. Okay, and once again, we're going to select all of these vertexes. We're going to move it to a Z of zero. And that to zero. Now we're going to select these vertexes and pull them down to make it more of a foot and less of a yeah. okay looking at I think I may have also made the body too long so we're gonna put in this way a little bit 
Just look at this. Put it in. Yeah, that's much better. And then just for the sake of No, I need to add one last line, an edge loop right through the center of the foot. And I do mean to the center. Because that way, when I mesh smooth, I have more of a foot pad to work with and less of a completely rounded area. And you're already seeing the basic shape here. Now let's go ahead and collapse it. And we're going to move the, adjust the pivot point to 0x because we're going to mirror it to make the opposite leg. And then we reset transform. And oh look, it turned inside out. Why? Because when you mirror an item, in this case a leg, you're not constructing an identical one from scratch. You're taking the existing one and scaling it in a negative 100%. So it's now inside out. So we hit normal to reverse normals and bring it back to no bring it back to this. Okay. Uh, looking at it, I think we can bring down the front of the neck a little. I also think we need to bring these legs forward. So it draws a nice little line towards that hump over the, sh over the shoulder. Okay. I'm now going. I ha currently have the human frozen. I'm going to go ahead and hide him because we don't really need him anymore. Okay. Now we need to make the back legs. And in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I look here, and what the hip is very low on the body. It's like it's like someone just took an O-ring and hung it from the spine and then the legs are connected on the sides lower down. Um, but in general that means that the legs are actually connected low on the rear torso. Looks odd. Doesn't look like most other quadruped areas that I, other quadruped anatomy that I've seen working. So let's go ahead, go back to the skull. I go back to the model. <coughs> I'm going to go ahead and create. I'm going to make, like I said, I'm going to make Sarian. Saurian back legs, which means they're actually going to attach higher on the hip, which means we're going to take these vertexes and raise them up higher on the critter. This will help to find the, the hip bone area. And this one will kind of go to up here. And we're going to select these two vertexes and bring them in a little bit. Oh. Bring them in a little bit. Again, to help define that hip area. And we're going to go ahead and give it a mesh smooth because we kind of need to in order for it to keep up with the uh, most of it. <clears throat> Let's make this all the same color so it makes it easier to see as one piece. There.
and now we're going to do a similar thing here but for the back legs. In fact, to the, it's to the point where we can actually take this and drag a copy back. The problem with this is it doesn't look right. Your front legs and back legs are not identical. So we're going to use what's called an FFD box. Well, after we reset the transform, we're going to use what's called an FFD box. What this is, this is a grid of control points. <coughs> that kind of allows you to adjust the proportions of an item. Okay, I think we need to go ahead and make it a little bit thicker, especially on the front, but I also think we need to make the feet bigger. And then here, let's make those feet a lot wider. Let's lower this, yeah, lower it. By changing the proportions like this, we're making them less look less identical. Also, the upper shoulder won't be as visible as the uh, entire back leg so it will look like the back legs are longer than the shoulder okay and then the last thing to do is we're going to mirror it and just like before that means we have to reset selected which turns it inside out, and then invert the normals. And thus we have the basic shape that we will be working from to make this critter. In preparation, I'm getting out my tablet, my Wacom Intuos, plugging it in. Now, select all Z. This is our basic shape for our Thunder Drake. It's already looking kind of intimidating. And now, File, Export Selected. Actually, you know what? Hold off. I realized just now that you can't see. I, I well, remembered just now that you cannot see the dialog boxes that pop up because of the way that the screen capture works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export each of these, you know, the body as one mesh and the legs as another. And I'm going to merge them after I've brought them a bit closer to shape. File, export selected, under legs. Alright, and then just for the sake of, while I work on the actual sculpting, let's do that. Okay, the next thing I have to do is I have to turn on ZBrush. Well, not turn on, but in, in this case, but 
move to ZBrush. So, bing! I wish it was that fast to turn on ZBrush. It's not. And I'm going to import first. Get up to the desktop. The Thunder body. You're then going to append a subtool. And on that subtool, import the legs. On both of them, we're going to hit X, which will give us a mirror. And right now, I'm going to start moving the basic shape of the torso to be more than just a silhouette with thickness. And to do that, I use my Wacom tablets. Oh, oh, oh. Green liner and yay. Yes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by moving. Now that means exactly that, moving. You'll notice I have not altered what level of geometry I'm on. I haven't subdivided it yet. That's because you don't want to subdivide anything until you're up for, until you like the level of detail you currently have. Well, not until you like the work done on the current level of detail. The reason for this is because it's easier it's easy to subdivide and go higher than it is to not subdivide and go lower. So yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm giving it a nice basic shape. And this would be the area where the stomach is, so... Unlike humans, most healthy animals have nice bulgy stomachs. And go look at, you know, a horse or cattle. And they do. So we bulge out the stomach a bit. We're also going to grab this part of the... Bring that in. Bring this down and in. And frame. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the legs. And this part of the leg actually needs to come in and forward a little. So it's blending into the actual torso the way the back legs are. The back legs, on the other hand, need to move out a little so that the thigh isn't totally engulfed by the body. And there we go. Now, the next step is that is absolute bare minimum shape language. So we're going to go ahead and merge down. We now have just one geometry shape. We're going to give it one, two levels of subdivision. No, let's give it only one level. And we're going to do what's called a Dynamesh. Now what that Dynamesh just did is it turned it from five separate shells, so to speak, into one solid one. One piece. And by that I don't mean the anime. It also created a mesh that had... Ouch! Ralph! No! Ah, get your hook. No. Yes, what do you want? I'm putting 
bring it down, down on the floor. He came sprinting up and wanted snuggles. Sorry about the distra distraction. Anyway, instead of being five cohesive cells, it's just one cell, and we are going to use the smooth tool to kind of blend in the overall shape. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 I can't use this. Let's go ahead and turn the blur to zero. The resolution is 256. No. Okay, that's better. But it's now such a high resolution, I don't like starting from here. So what we're going to do first and I go to deformation. We're going to polish 100%. Um, we're still getting a bit of ripple here. So we're going to do it one more time. Okay. And we're going to smooth out the shoulder area, like I said, and the hip area. Now, the next thing we're going to do do we have reconstruct subdivision? And nope, can't do it. It's got triangles. So instead, we're going to Z remesh. What Z remesher does is it creates basic, it recreates topology. And bing. And let's see what we get from this one. Okay, we're down to 10,000 polygons, and you can see the size of them. Yeah, that's something I can work with for doing basic shaping and basic sculpting now. So, and the next thing we're doing is we're going to go ahead and bring this up a bit. Bring this back, and we're going to give a basic. I mean, I don't like having stroke on except when I like it on, or lazy mouse on. I'm going to give a basic. Oh, way too much. And then intensity down, and bring the mouse size down. Alright, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to go back to that muscular anatomy uh, picture, you know, that's uh, this one, and we're going to look at where the muscles are, on mostly on the legs and the torso so that we can put similar masses, not the full detail of every single muscle fiber, but just the masses. In place. <coughs> We're gonna start with the, uh, the neck and head area up here. Yeah, up here. We're not going to mass in the head yet. That's going to be one of the last things that we do. <clears throat> but when we look at this, we see that it's got large muscles coming down the top of the neck, but then the muscles the rest of the way kind of go almost sideways. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of add in this muscle here. And probably this way too with oh too strong and we're gonna shrink our selection brush
No. Fuzzball. And now we need to smooth this just a tad because it's getting too sharp of a transition. And with very few exceptions, muscles don't normally have that sharp of a transition. Now, we're going to pull it down. Because it may not have a sharp transition, but it has a sharp un terminus underside. Okay, and then coming down this way. One last bit. Let's, I'm going to use a what's called a slash brush. Okay, that's the basics. As you can tell, it does not look anything like what will happen. <coughs> but that's because we're just laying down the masses right now. We're laying down the shapes. Okay, next comes the, the shoulder muscles. And what we have is we have a rather large one that kind of comes almost diagonally across the shoulder right here. I'm going to smooth it just to make it a mass and not a detail. And we actually have a neck muscle that comes out right here and goes over the shoulder into the neck. And bring that in to kind of emphasize that that muscle continues over. Unfortunately, the way the geometry is, it won't, it won't look proper until we do a much higher definition. And we're going to further detail it. We're going to give it a light slash. To further detail the fact that there are two masses there that, fun oh, that function like this. Okay. Try to get a bit of a better blend there. I'm going to have to go back and redefine that a little bit better when we move up a level, but that's not yet. <clears throat> now, we have some muscles coming. Okay. The next muscles actually come down this way. Okay. And then they that one that comes out here. kind of blend this in because we want it to make one mass. And 
and smooth it just a bit because muscles don't start and end so swiftly. Now we have the lower leg, or middle leg actually. And unfortunately that, no, okay, I see what happened. We're going to get a, take the move brush. We're going to bring it out. We're going to bring this back to here. Bring this down. And the muscle and the muscle comes across the entire si outside of this part of the leg. And I'm smoothing out this to make it a little bit easier. And a bit of a blend. And okay, good. That leg is still holding. Okay, I think we need to increase this just to make it a little bit thicker. Okay, that is the muscle that draws back the upper upper arm, upper leg, really. Why did I say arm? Can you tell me why I said arm? And hello, Gonzalez. Oh, Snikey, sorry. Ah, uh, sorry. This is, I've still got it at a very low polygon count because this is a, you know, the, the rough massing in, just the raw details. I've got to move this kind of out a bit because it's, you know, bring, and then we're going to shrink this. Blend the shoulder forward a bit. And we uh, glance over at the anatomy once again. And most of the ankle and below is pretty much. You no, know, there's muscle in the upper calf, but halfway down and below it becomes mostly. Uh, tendons and the like. And like I said, this is all just massing it in. This is not the actual final shape. And we've got muscles that come. Let's increase the intensity just a little. Come, muscles that come massing down like this. And then we smooth it just a bit to represent some of those fatty deposits that build up around the muscles. 
Let's build this one out a bit more. And then once again, we smooth it out so that there's fatty deposits there. And we've already got most of the shoulder basic shapes down. Now, the next thing to do is we need to make the toes and the feet. Now, if this was going to be a hippo-like critter, all we'd just do is immediately just draw on the toesies, like this. And that would be like little nails, and be done. But we're not. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab them, grab those little toesies we made, and drag them out a bit more. These are going to be clawed feet. Now, I'm going to zoom in, move down, and I'm going to shrink the brush, and I'm going to kind of blend out this part for the purposes of representing the tendons that control the toes. Okay. Make the toes a little bit thicker. We're going to get more detail done later after we've gotten up to a higher polygon count. Which we're not going to do the higher ply count just yet because we've still got a lot of work to do. But that's our basic tones. The poly as you can see, the detail is just not there yet for the none of the polygons yet. Now, if we look, yeah, if we look at the. Uh, Anatomy of the I know again, we see that it, the, the image I have does not show us very much about the anatomy of the chest. So a lot of this I'm going to have to fake. Um, one of the things I've noticed is I'm going to need to increase a bit here and represent that as the chest muscles blending into the neck. Now I have to do it as an inflation. Not as a move. And then smooth it out. Because we've got vertexes that will cross over. Now what will happen is when it comes time we're going to be doing another uh, Dynamesh that will blend all of this together. And we'll use take that opportunity to smooth all of that area out. Anyway, the leg doesn't need much strength moving forward and back. So the center pectoral muscle is not as important as it is on humans. It's only concerned with going up and down. So the top pectoral and the bottom pectoral would be more important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add on a bit of thickness here. And we're going to draw the bottom of the rib cage. And 
and bring that down. Now, in about 15 minutes, I'm going to be taking a brief break for the purposes of, of you know, dealing with some matters here in the house. I just thought I'd let you know. Now, the ribs in that area, in the back area, won't be so much visible as they'll be, there's, there's muscles that actually overlay across those ribs. I mean, everyone's had, you know, not pork ribs. The ribs going to draw on some basic geo of that kind of muscle. And we also need to add a bit of make a larger basically bring out the upper shoulder a bit bring them bring out slight bony landmarks underneath the bone underneath the muscle including right there and right here muscles give power bony landmarks give structure Now we switch back up. Now we switch over to the back legs. And looking at them, let's draw the ham first. The ham kind of follows an arc. Around like that. And let's draw on the, the hip bone. Because again, we need structure. Muscle masses give power, bony landmarks give structure. Let's move out just a bit. Okay. And then there is, let's join this muscle here. And we have a nice little connection between the thigh and the torso here. One thing that we're doing there is we're also it also gives us a chance to add a little bit more mass. Okay, two definitions of mass while I'm working on this. The first is when I'm talking about the masses. I'm talking about the overall shapes that define the creature. In this case, you can see that there's a mass for this huge shoulder block. The mass for the hip block is almost half the size. There is a small mass for the, uh, for the pectoral area, and then a large mass for the belly. I'm going to Bring that out just a little bit. We're going to then smooth it in, blend it in. And then we're going to make the mouth a lot bigger and kind of give it a little bit more of a flow to that stomach. And a bit of a smooth. And then we're going to bring up the sides of the gut. These are actually adductor muscles. 
Well, that's a bit too much. You get the feeling that we're, we're adding mass. And the structure of it, that curve with a dip in the middle of the torso, gives it a more of a sense of the other kind of mass, which is weight, density, presence. Now, if you're watching this right now, it looks like I've just got a whole blobby bunch of blobs. And that's because right now, I do. But those blobby blunts of blobby blunts of blobby bunch of blobs will get uh, turned into actual muscles later on. Now, there are multiple muscles in, well, what would be the calf in a human on this critter, according to the rhino anatomy I was looking at. And some of them do, in fact, equate to the equivalent points on a human. But it also has slightly different shapes and masses for, the, for those muscles. Okay. Now we need to come up down this way. And make this a lot bigger. Alright, when I move with a large brush, it tends not, it's not as destructive to detail. If I used, or not, if I, uh, standard brush, if I used inflate, it would swell and cause some of that detail to be lost or over exaggerated. For example, I using an inflate here. What inflate does is imagine each vertex has an arrow pointing out from it. Those arrows are the direction that the vertex is pointing. Um, let's zoom in here. Let's just rotate. Okay, now shrink the mouse so it's a bit more. This vertex right here, it's normal is probably coming out in the line, coming out in this direction, while this vertex is coming out in this direction. Inflate causes it to move in the direction of its normal, which means it makes it swell to shapes like this. If you inflate them, they start to overlap and the difference between them goes from a smooth line to a sharp valley. The standard brush, on the other hand, does not move it in the direction of the vertexes, but rather, and uh, normals rather, but rather in the direction of the actual uh, presence of the mouse. Case in point, right here, I need to move that out a bit because it's starting to look like the thigh is bent. I'm going to use standard because I don't want to lose the detail I already have sculpted there. And then I'm going to shrink the mouse down and smooth a little bit down here. Try and emphasize the mass of the thigh, because that's what I was that's what was happening is I was losing the mass of the thigh right there. And it's already looking a lot better. I've been working on this for just a little over an hour. And this is the basic shape. I still have to make the toes. I have to add some musculature down the tail and come up with a basic head shape, which is probably not going to be as long and thin as this is. It'll probably be a really heavy jawline critter.
but let's go ahead I'm gonna have to pause it here and hide the rhino because it's time for me to get some other matters taken care of I will probably be back sometime within half an hour to 45 minutes so I'm going to actually come down I'm gonna bring it down and then I'm gonna bring it back up when it's time okay so when I can see my hand you know right here off to the side as I count down from five four three two one 